Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Um, maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction for people who don't know anything about Dodger. What can they expect when they tune into the series? Well, Dodger is a is a is an exciting prequel to Oliver Twist, and we've taken out all the bad, all the boring characters and just kept Fagan and uh, Bill Sykes and uh, and Dodger, obviously, and a few. And we've created some new characters. It's a it's very. I think it's a, this particular episode that's coming out the Christmas uh, the Easter special is is probably the funniest of all the episodes, and because um, it is a comedy, it's comedy drama. And uh, and it's and in this episode, Dodger is arrested and they sent into uh, school to have an education. So that's the basic story. But I think that it's a very fun. It's much funnier, I think, than people will think it is. And it's good for all for adults and children. There's lots of references in this one, the new one that grown ups will get as well. So we think of it as a very much a family comedy drama. Yeah, big crossover appeal. We also have, but we started in comedy, so we always get our comedy friends in. So we've got quite a lot of high-profile comedy, cult comedy names. Um, so we've had Julian Barrett, we've had Alexi Sale, and then this upcoming special, we've got Matthew Holness, who people all know as Garth Marenghi, um, Harry Peacock, who's in Toast of London, loads of funny people. So that always gives it a different feel to the usual children's um, programming, I think. Yes. And um, taking a step back, you know, what was the initial inspiration to kind of go back to Dickens' 1883 novel and kind of do this prequel? I mean, I grew up watching that that, that Oliver Twist film and I've sort of rewatched it again as an adult and realised it was actually incredibly dark. Um, but so, you know, tapping into, I guess, like those different elements, but also making it family friendly and, and bringing in all that comedy. So what was the starting point for you? Well, the, the first series was actually funny enough, the first series is quite dark and it's and it's become funnier as it's gone on because we didn't want to shy away from the reality of being be, of showing what life really was like. So the first one is actually, you know, the opening scene in the first ever episode or the first few scenes are it's about Fagan talking about, you know, one of their children has been hung, you know, and it's like, whoa, and, and it's quite, you know, it's quite heavy going. So we're not. But then. I think the best comedy and the best drama sometimes, you know, we all like Jimmy McGovern and Paul Abbott and people like that. And Dickens himself, you, you have the tragedy and the comedy sort of work alongside each other. And I had the idea a long time ago as a book, and then in the end it didn't happen. And then so I, then I thought, well, I'll turn it into a, into a television program. And, and then Lucy and I worked on it together. And that's where it's, so it started off as something I was doing on my own. And it wasn't, as, it was, it's much better now. We've both written it together. Oh yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. No, um, yeah. no we had to, um, there were certain characters, obviously, that were quite toxic for modern audiences. So Fagin needed a rethink. Nancy could not be as she was in the book. We didn't yeah. want to. Uh, and then Bill Sykes obviously needed a rethink as well. So we took it as an opportunity to do a fresh spin on characters you think you know, but with today's sensitivities. But actually, quite a lot of what they're going through, sadly, is still relevant because with kids mm. having to go to food banks. And in those days, of course... There were no food banks, so thieving was the only option. Um, but sadly, there are still things that some children can relate to today. So that's why Dickens still feels relevant. Um, and obviously he had, a, as you say, it was quite dark, but then very funny as well. So we we are um, leaning into both of that. Uh, but as Reese said, it's getting more. The capers, what we found is as we were writing more and more episodes, the capers and the sense of adventure really was, was thrilling for us. And... Um, Billy Jenkins, who plays Dodger, is absolutely brilliant. He can do comedy, mm. tragedy, everything. So um, th then that, that became the main focus. What can be the most exciting adventures we can do, the most filmic on a, a budget like this, without it feeling like, without being able to see what the budget is. So we want it to look expensive and be um, ambitious. And also, we I also believe in, again, coming from comedy, every scene uh, and how we edit it and everything is very much like a like comedy sketches. You know, like we, we've come up, we started writing sketches for Lucy with Titty Bang Bang and I did things, the fast show and stuff. And, you, and your job is to make ske a sketch, you know, that's 30 seconds to two minutes long. And you've got to sell everything in that time. And I think a lot of Dodger, why it's worked quite well is because it moves at a pace like a sketch show, even though it's a, a comedy. And and we have, as yeah, and the three specials we've done, they we definitely because the brief was not to have very different stories and not to, there's no sort of like overarching sort of storyline so you can do quite fun one offs. However, in this new one, um, the uh, Charles Rowan played by David Threlfall, we find out he's not dead, he's alive, and that sets up what's going to happen in the future because he's a bit like um, 
It's a bit like that. We, we sort of ripped off, not ripped off, ripped off is the wrong word. We slightly stole We're elements of Breaking by. Bad. Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah, we've we've been inspired by a lot of things. That, yeah, so we've got references to A Clockwork Orange in the new special. We've got some kid, the gang who are dressed like the Droogs in that. Um, we've got, Reese. you were saying that you wanted it to have that kind of Shawshank Redemption feel. They yeah. get to school, they think they've been sent to prison, and they find that this public school is so much worse than prison. I mean, there's yeah. still the beatings for a start, and there's still the sadistic schoolmasters yeah. um so it, obviously the schools were horrific at that point those those public schools um i'm sure they're lovely now uh creating wonderful young gentlemen to rule our country <laughs> and and i mean it is kind of uh a difficult line to tread maybe but maybe the, the magic of this show is that you have come from kind of adult comedy um and you are putting in those references for the adults and the political satire um, but obviously making it kind of family friendly. I mean, does that ever pose a challenge? Is it sometimes like, oh, is that too close to, you know, crossing a line somewhere? Um, and Some, how do you put the line? Well, sometimes because what we've got, we've actually got quite a lot of freedom. What's brilliant about working with the children, Children's BBC and the BBC in general is they do let you, you're not, they're not over your shoulder and, they, and you get to do what you want. Genuinely, we've had the freedom. The only thing they sometimes come up and they say, oh, well, actually, this might not work very well for young children. They might not get this. This is a bit too close. You know, if there's like an innuendo sort of line or whatever. In general, we've only had about three things that we couldn't sh couldn't put on. We quite like writing uh, without swearing and things. You know, it's a bit of a relief. It's actually, a, it's better. You're more creative. You think of funnier lines like Fagan not being able to swear. You give, you can create new words for him and and whatever. So that's as, quite as nice. Dickens did. So yes. we're following in his footsteps there. Yeah. So so that that is actually not a problem. Like, we like the family having it for the whole family. We we are very much. Uh, we want this to get to the widest audience possible. You know, we've made a lot of cult programs that no one's watched before, and we kind of want to stop that and get into the, you know, make something a bit more appealing. <laughs> so that, so, and I think with this, um, yeah, I, I think that um, like like Matt Groening does it very well. You know, with The Simpsons, you know, you get uh, things that the adults laugh at, uh, or or Pixar films do yeah, the same. Yeah, all those. Yeah, Toy Story. Yeah, Toy that Story. was the aim. Yeah, but well, absolutely, this, and and you realise that actually not being condescending to children because actually they do love a lot of the comedy and you know I remember things when I watched when I was younger and okay I wasn't picking up every joke but I still enjoyed watching it so I think sometimes you know not assuming that you have to make everything incredibly basic and not and not kind of put sophisticated things in um it's kind of patronizing in a way yeah well, that's the key thing we haven't written any why I, why it's won awards I think why it went why it's been shown on BBC one and those kind of things is because it has got that broader appeal and I think and we and I think a lot of we haven't it's sort of aimed at sort of you know it's demo, it's supposed to be aimed between eight and twelve year olds but I think that actually it's much broader than that and we found we read an art there's an article in the Guardian the other day about and and the the, the writer was saying how there's so many Dickens things and it's a bit boring, you know, great expectations for the 30th time. However, they mentioned that she says that her brother was 30 and he loves Dodger. And you go like, that's the kind of thing that's happening is that it, because it is safer. It's like, there isn't a lot of sitcom around, actually. You look at, there aren't many of them. You know, when we were growing up, there were 20 sitcoms, you know, black, you know, you'd have loads of things every night. There'll be, there aren't that many. So D Dodger is sort of the, um, is, you know, is a historical, it is partly a sitcom. I mean, this, as I say, the latest episode is very funny, F funnier than all the others. It's got a lot more jokes in it. So it's sort of, it's, um, it's filling a gap that's not there at the moment. And also kind of is it refreshing because it does feel like a lot of kids stuff is so dominated by like animated films um, and, and TV shows. Is there something great about, you know, watching real people doing real things? And, and even like you said, like being on a, you know, not massive, massive budget, but the way you've like done the costumes and the set design, you know, feels really, really oh, yeah. um, immersive and incredible. So was it kind of a lot of fun to like lean into all of that? And did you, you know, um, encounter any challenges and pulling all that off? Well, I mean, for the cast as well, I mean, the costume designer, Jacqueline Mills, absolutely brilliant. And the designer, Dave Ferris, amazing. And then the the young the young cast as well, Ellie Mae Sheridan, who plays Polly Cracker, never even 
acted before and this was only her second audition and it was COVID so we met everybody over Zoom only the first time they were all cast and we met them all in the room so that could have gone terribly wrong but um, mm. thanks to Reese's direction it didn't and they all pulled it off and they were all amazing that was what was exciting as well finding new stars for the future and I mean obviously Lenny Rush had worked before but look how amazing he is and now he's gone on to um, he'll he'll definitely have his own show on BBC One and um, he's just won loads of awards as well um, yeah so we did a lot of research as well. We loved doing it. We read loads of books about it. We got photos of, there was an amazing um, book about London urchins, Spitalfields urchins. And um, so we wanted to get the detail right and the grime, the right level of griminess, exactly right. And then as we've moved into the specials more, we we thought there's a lot of fun to put Dodger in a, a richer world. So what's quite good is with this, these new adventures, he can he can suddenly be in the upper with the upper crust, um, with his top shiny top hat um, rather than his manky one. And you can see him; he can move effortlessly between all the worlds. So that was really freeing for us because we basically you can do anything with him. And we've yeah. got so many new ideas. We want to we want to do one at a coronation. We're like the timing's quite good. We want to do Queen Victoria's coronation. Um, so we want to do um, smuggling in Cornwall. There's so many ideas we could we could run and run. Hopefully, hopefully and, and, we'll the, and yeah. going. But in terms of the animation side of it, yeah, I'm. It's a relief not to to. I, I'm a bit bored of seeing the same style of animation all the time in the Pixar thing and kind of slightly wisecracking American style of comedy. You know, this is. You know, if you look at something like Chicken Run and Nick Park stuff, this is more along the lines of though it's very British. The thing about Dodger is it's a very British sense of humour. Uh, and, and I think that we also, as comedy writers, Lucy and I are on the set all the time, and we're still changing, you know, in a way that American showrunners do things. We are adding jokes there and then on the day all the time. And that's something you can't do with animation. You know, what, what I mean is it's, it, the process doesn't work like that. So we're able to, that's what's so good. That's why it's quite refreshing. And because we move so quickly, um, you know, it has an energy to it that you don't, again, I think you don't necessarily get always in, in animation, I think. And I, I think it's nice for kids to see to see people look like themselves. And also I'm a bit bored. And I like what's nice about being historical is you don't have, there's nothing about social media on it. There's nothing about, there's no scenes where the text comes up on the phone and they're going, oh God, she slagged me off on, on, on WhatsApp or whatever. Uh, it's just nice to not have any of that in it and to be in a completely different world. And it is like it's, it's almost like a these days it's like a science fiction that you're going into a different world. It's so different to so alien to what kids have now in terms of the technology and all that. It's nice to have that and have horses rather than cars, although we couldn't Even afford any. We horses. could use, we could usually only afford one horse one per horse. T- fifteen yeah. episodes. <laughs> yeah, we had we've had two horses all together in yeah. the whole in the, entire, in the whole thing. It's a two horse show, <laughs> but maybe in the future it will be a twenty horse show. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and and maybe you can just say a few more words about this incredible cast and and how you work with them because I was reading you know I love Christopher Eccleston he's another actor I've grown up kind of watching and he kind of stays in his uh, Cockney accent like even when he's kind yes. of going off uh, yeah. in between scenes and you know you almost use the script more as a kind of loose framework and allow people to ad lib and stuff and that must be a lot of fun and how how do you work with the cast in that respect? Yes. Well, um, in terms of Christopher, so we we always wanted him to play that part. And Lucy and I, it was Lucy and I had worked with him on something else. Lucy had seen an interview with him, said he wanted to do more comedy. This was about five years ago. And I did a thing called Brian Pern, which was like a spoof music program. He appeared in his, in his first sort of comedy role. And then we were doing something else. And we said, oh, and I told him about Dodger. And 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 I said, you know, you'd be good as Fagan. And that was, that was in about 2018 or something or 2017. And... And then he said, yes, you do it, you see. And the moment we got Christopher, then we got David Threlfall. And suddenly what happens, it opens up a whole world. When you've got like, you know, what we would say are the actors, actors, are very respected, brilliant people who are very funny. Like Christopher is very funny in this. And he adds lots of extra ideas, doesn't he, Lucy? In terms yeah. of, you know, he, not only is he brilliantly authentic and he did so much research into the, the period. He was talking to Simon Sharma about the character and stuff like that. He, yeah, and he had dialect coach. Dialect coach. You forget he's not, after a while, you forget he's he's from Salford. And you go, oh, yeah. And when he starts talking at the weekend, he's like, oh, yeah, he's from Salford. I forgot that. <laughs> and then David Threlfall also is one of these actors who comes, um, he comes not with his own, yeah, he came with his own teeth. So he, comes, yeah. <laughs> he had special teeth. He was like, these are the characters' teeth. He researched because it was a real man. Who, um, so he was based on the real man. And he did, we had all done detail, detailed research, but he brought a whole new level to it. Um, he knew exactly how he wanted to play him. He knew exactly how he wanted his hair. 
And so you can kind of leave an actor like that to it. Yeah. And, and change lines afterwards because he would say, I think this wouldn't work for my character, having read what I've read. So we'd we change it afterwards. Um yeah. in the and we, yeah. and we wouldn't mind and we wouldn't mind if and if something sounded too written or too overly, you know, uh, written, we would we're not very precious in that way. So we're happy to change lines because again, we've come from that background. And it, and it, and it, we always improve, you know, we can always improve things. Sometimes you get to the set and a scene you've written doesn't sound right at all. And sometimes it's too it might be too much for some of the younger actors. And you go like the start all over. They sound like they sound like they're forty. So you'd have an yeah. eight-year-old. It sounds like a line a forty-year-old would say. So obviously that needs to change. So as soon as you hear them say it, it's usually less for the kids. Scoop it in half and then give more to the adults because certainly with cer certain kids like Mila Liu who plays Tang, she's one of those who comes in with killer one-liners, and that's that works best in this ensemble. So it was learning who to where the space where the light needed to shine at different points in the scene. I think wasn't it. Yeah. So that changed, as you say, on set. I mean, every scene would change from yeah. the page. Yeah. On the day, not massively. Sometimes a little bit, but always there would be something. And what's that? And also, what's good about these episodes? We're more out and about, as it were. So there's less in the sort of lair and more out and on location. And Krista Eccleston as Fagan gets more involved in the first series. He basically sits at home in the chair, doesn't leave the lair because he's agoraphobic. And in this new, in the new specials, he's 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 out more, and it's much better. It's more fun. And if we did more, um, we would definitely have him him. I, you know, the he would be out and about much more as part of the gang rather than just being in the chair in the house. Um, he's keen to do more of that too. And and in terms of the cast, I mean, obviously, you've also made efforts to kind of it felt like for a long time period drama would be. You know, there'd be no diversity in terms of ethnicity yeah. or, or anything else. Um, and why is it important, I guess, especially for kids to see themselves yeah. in modern Britain, even though it's a period uh, piece, you know, reflected on screen? Yes, but that, you see, that wasn't accurate. London has always been a melting pot. There've always been people coming in on the docks, the ports, um, mm. especially in this area of London. There were many, many different races there. It's just not reflect. It's just not been reflected um, in the way that, you know, the Fagin's gang in the book is all male. So there were a couple of sniffy comments online for some fucking idiots saying, um, <laughs> oh, there's women, in, there's women in there. Oh, and there's a black policeman. Well, actually, there was a black policeman at that point. Um, and they were obviously. It's like, come on. Yeah, that, that that really annoys me. That's if you go onto IMDb and you check out all the reviews, it's given one star by people who go, <laughs> "This is outrageous." You know, it's all about <laughs> these people. They, I cannot believe this is completely wrong. Rewriting history, and you well, go, "Well, that's no, not we're thing. actually we're actually rewriting history for the correct reasons." Because they're all the ones who are really happy. pleased they've got their new British blue passports, probably. Uh, all the remainers, uh, the uh, the would leavers, uh, probably anyway. Never, it's no game. <laughs> um. So yes, but absolutely, this um, yeah, it needs to it needs to reflect modern Britain. Television has to reflect modern Britain, but also it accurately reflects eighteen thirties London. So yeah. it works in both ways. And in the making of it, did you have an absolutely favourite moment on set, or particularly in the making of these Easter specials? Oh, it was. I don't know. What have you got any, Lucy? I all I remember is the hottest day ever. We filmed on the hottest day of Britain ever. And we were and Robert <laughs> Lindsay, uh, we didn't know it was two days. And the the one the, the scene in this episode where there's a really funny character, uh, uh, Ashwin, who plays um what's his name in the in the program? Um he's called Woodward. He's named Woodward. after the president's men, Woodward. He's yes. a school newspaper man. He this so we had a scene in this cathedral, Wells Cathedral, on the hottest day, and everyone was dressed in sort of like it was it was so hot. So Christopher did his scenes as a monk and running around. We had all these monks, and everyone was sweating there, and their wigs were coming off. We had it was like the hottest day. That was quite hard going. So you will see us. I think there was, there's some sweat on. That's that probably place. least favourite, isn't it? Or you were That's just least favourite. Actually, I had a lot of it. My I had a, for me, I never had a good. I was always <laughs> up against it. Every day I was always up against it and panicking. So my my most my, my favorite moment was when it was finished and we all watched it and everyone was happy. No, that's not true. Um, my God, favorite. Why can't we think of one? There must be loads. There's loads. I like it's. Fun. I always thought it was fun when we we're all together and we. Must... What's always quite funny is when like there's always a lot of pressure with the children. They have to have their their child hours right. And then often we schedule the silly stuff at the end of the day. So if it'll be me, often me, Lucy, and Javon who plays the policeman. 
we would often do our funny, silly bits, or you and Christopher would do a funny, silly scene together, or Tony Way. Any of those things were quite fun when it was um, when the hard bit was done of all the sort of the, 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 the with the younger actors, because that was almost like you wanted that to be really, really good, and, and then then you'd have like an hour to for us to dick about a bit more. Do you think? I think- yeah, that no, that was fun because then it felt more like a a, com- a loose comedy moment. But I think probably the most magical moment was walking into the lair that first time when you see it. Mm. And actually, it is like walking. I mean, I always loved dolls' houses growing up, right? So it's like being a dolly in a doll's house, going, "Oh my god, I'm walking into." And the, and the designer had it exactly right. You just can't believe that it's come to this. The money has been spent to to build this world. There was a rooftop. There was a police, and that's probably the best. The one of my favourite bits also, one of my favourite times is when you get, when you hear, Joel Cadbury does our music for us. I think the music is unbelievable. And often we'd say, oh, we need a, we need a bit of music that sounds, you know, can you do this or that? And when we're editing, it's when they say, you'd send a music track through and you go, oh my God, like heist music. You go, like, we need a, we need like a heist track or they're going to rob a train. Can you give us some music? I said, can you, I want something a little bit like um, uh, Pink Floyd, da, 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 one of these days. And he goes off and 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 he mixes like that with sort of like Lalo Schifrin style sort of like d- Dirty Harry music. And it all comes together in its own Dodger form. That's always quite fun too, when you hear the music. Mm-hmm. He should win some awards for that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, we're out of time, but you know, and in terms of the takeaways, obviously it's an entertaining show and, um, but you know, even in the making of it for yourselves, how's it made you sort of reflect a bit on, gosh, are we actually, are kids these days facing, you know, similar things and in terms of, you know, having to live through deprivation and, and, you know, thinking of kind of these really posh schools and how it does, you know, the our future leaders are kind of, um, brought up there I don't know has it re- made you reflect on today's Britain in, in in some aspects as well well I mean the inequities inequalities are still there sadly um yeah well, that's that's well that's what that's about it's like you know I'm I didn't I'm very much and I mean and I went to like a comprehensive school and all this I didn't go you know you're, you're very lucky to I know the people I, I often find that um I think I'm not you know, those very, very, there's that privilege that comes with it on those very posh schools, you know, and that's what it's about in this episode. They say he's going to be prime minister. He's going to be this. It's it's the it's the way. I mean, the school isn't eaten, but it's kind of based on those kind of places. And but and there's a line where the boy says, what are you what are you going to be when you grow up? And he goes, happy when I get out of here. It doesn't make you happy. You know, I find all those poor kids who'd be sent off to at that age to to boarding school. It's all I think it's terrible. And I and it's, and, you know, it's really sad. And um, when you're that young, and I, so I, I find, you know, that's well, just. Got, well, I hope we've got more social mobility now. I mean, you'd think so, wouldn't yeah. you? Um, yeah. It's. We, we the poly, yeah, it's, it's, we, we just want, what's nice for our, for anyone watching Dodger is that you don't have to pay for your Netflix subscription. You don't have to, you know, get Apple TV. It's for everyone. It's on the BBC and it's, that's what's nice. And no other pro, I don't think any other, I mean, the BBC has this thing of, you know, edu- educate, entertain, inform. And if you go to any other place, they'll just entertain. And sometimes you need the other two. And what's quite nice about Dodger is that the, what we can do, I suppose, to the audience, the young people watching is, somehow help educate them or inform them about things and uh, and how to because the thing about dodger is even though he's a cri- he's a f- criminal he's just trying to survive and he's actually they're like a family and they're living in a world where if you don't rob you're not going to get food you're going to die that's the, that was what happened then and it's it's the, it's the case now i mean people you know that's the that's the reality and it's the shame mm-hmm. and sometimes you know there's a reason behind everything and it's so awful i think it's so sad that you get these particularly very young children living in this life and what goes on that we don't see, you know, you think of all those, I don't know, it's just that that is quite hard going and we can't change that. But what we can do is sort of show, you know, at least, you know, put it in, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a sort of comedy drama. And I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying. I, I'm not very good. I'm no, I'm no Bono when it comes to politics. <laughs> Um, I think I'm almost up for my time, but just very quickly, you know, obviously you've done so many other things and, and more like adult comedy um, before this or like the Freddie Mercury documentary. Can you tell us what you might be working on next or separately or together? You've just done a drama, Lucy, acting. Yeah, the a new Jack and Harry Williams who made The Tourist. So I've just been acting in that. Um, and Reese, you tell 
I'm doing a thing called, I did a thing called uh, Lucy's in it too. I did a thing with Gary and Martin Kemp from Spandau Ballet, which did quite well. And they wanted to do a sequel. And so we've just filmed that and we're it. I'm in the edit suite now. And that's going to be on at Christmas on BBC Two.